routine blood pressure assessment is to be undertaken manually. Now an automated vital sign equipment is to be used only if the patient requires more frequent observation, the patient is in critical care unit, if manual observation equipment is temporary unavailable, the patient is recovering from a general anesthetic, and if the patient is in an outpatient department and is clinically well. Now the normal baseline blood pressure is 120 millimeter of mercury for systolic and 80 millimeter of mercury for diastolic. Anything above systolic of 130 millimeter of mercury and below diastolic of 80 millimeter of mercury requires close monitoring and increase in frequency check. Always follow the hospital or facilities clinical emergency response system. Now to check for a manual blood pressure, make sure to confirm that the patient is well rested and have not had any physical activity for the last 20 minutes or so and remove any restrictive clothing. Make sure to choose the appropriate blood pressure cuff because cuffs that are too narrow for the size of the, the limb will result in a falsely elevated blood pressure. Conversely, cuffs that are too large for the size of the limb will result in a falsely low blood pressure measurement. Now the placement of the cuff should be two to three centimeter above your cubital fossa. And the artery marker should be in line with your brachial artery. If it's the first time you're looking after a patient, it's always good to check the initial systolic blood pressure. Now you can check it by feeling the radial pulse and inflating the cuff until the radial pulse cannot be felt anymore. Now gradually release or deflate the cuff until you feel the radial pulse. Now this point represents the systolic blood pressure. Place the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the brachial pulse and inflate to 30 millimeter of mercury higher than the initial systolic blood pressure. Then deflate to, two to three millimeter of mercury per heartbeat. You will hear the Korovkot sounds to determine your systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Now the SBP is the highest point at which the initial tapping or the Korovkov phase one is heard in two consecutive bits during exhalation. Now the DPP is equated with the disappearance of your Korovkov sounds. The blood pressure that you've taken is then immediately to be charted on your observation chart. Temperature is to be assessed according to the patient's condition, reason for admission, or as per local or other policy guidelines. Normal adult temperature is between 36.5 degrees Celsius and 37.2 degrees Celsius. At a minimum, temperature is to be assessed twice daily. Now to check for the patient's temperature, make sure that you'll be turning on your thermometer machine and put the probe cover onto your thermometer machine. Then instruct the patient what you're about to do and make sure that there's not gonna be any issues on her ear and to check for temperature, put the thermometer machine onto the patient's ear like so, hold it for three to five seconds, and press the result button. Then the result will show up on the thermometer machine. Make sure to notify the patient the result and document immediately onto your observation chart. The pulse should be counted 
when the patient is at rest or had not had any physical activity for the last 20 minutes or so. Now the normal adult pulse rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. The pulse should be measured by palpating the patient's radial pulse. If you are unable to access the patient's radial pulse, other sites can be used as appropriate. Now the patient's radial pulse should be assessed for rate, rhythm, and amplitude or strength. The pulse should be counted for 30 seconds or one minute if the rhythm is irregular. Then the pulse rate should be immediately documented or charted on your observation chart. Pulse oximetry measures oxygen saturation in the patient's blood. Now, an altered oxygen saturations are a late sign of respiratory distress. Initially, the body will try and compensate for hypoxia by increasing the rate and depth of respirations. By the time the oxygen saturations are decreasing, the patient is usually very compromised. Now, your normal oxygen saturations are 97 to 100% room air. Oxygen saturations above 90% correlate with very low blood oxygen levels and require urgent medical review. Now, if your patient's oxygen saturations are low, you will usually notice other signs that the patient is short of breath such as increased respiratory rate and effort. To measure the patient's oxygen saturation, make sure to check if there are no fake nails as it does affect the reading. Now turn the machine on and wait for a few seconds. Usually it will also turn on once you put it onto the patient's finger. Make sure to update the patient of the result then make sure to immediately document on your general observation chart. The normal adult respiratory rate is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. The respirations should be counted for 30 seconds. Now, if the patient's respiration falls outside the normal adult respiration parameters, then the RR must be counted for a full minute to ensure accuracy. The respiration should be counted while palpating the patient's radio pulse so that the patient is not aware that you are observing them. Now, the respiration should be immediately charted on your general observation chart. Now to learn more about your OSCE, make sure to subscribe and enroll now at AURN Pathway.